Imagine driving down the road in a car with no seatbelts or airbags because federal law does not require cars to have them. Imagine a world in which companies can contaminate the air as they please. A world where there are no regulations on toxic air emissions. Imagine a world where no one monitors pollution in U.S. waters, which results in water overflowing with sewage, chemicals, and bacteria. Unfortunately, this world was once a reality for many Americans. As a group, these issues are considered consumer protectionism problems, or the protection against unsafe and potentially life-threatening products and the assurance of accurate portrayal of marketed products and advertisements. Many issues have been solved in the past by legislative acts, and many because of one man. This man redefined what it meant to protect the rights of consumers and continued to raise awareness when he ran for president in 1992, 1996, 2000, 2004, and 2008. This man was Ralph Nader, one of the most confident, determined, and unsung heroes in American history. Disliked and fought by the establishment, Nader received abundant amounts of criticism concerning his work and methods, but he never gave up. As a result of Ralph Nader's fierce advocacy of consumer protectionism since the mid-1960s, millions of Americans enjoy improved safety and protection, while corporate responsibility to consumers across the nation has dramatically improved. Ralph Nader taking a stand for consumer protectionism in America's capitalistic system. Ralph Nader was born in Winstead, Connecticut in 1934 in an immigrant community. Residents of Winstead would meet periodically at town meetings to discuss all of the issues in the town. Both Nader and his sister attended these meetings with their father and became immersed in politics and society from a very young age. Nader's father got his entire family involved and would present a current topic around the dinner table for everyone to discuss. Every member in the family was required to share their opinions, even if their ideas were strongly opposed by other family members. This taught Nader how to strongly voice his opinions and fight for something he believed in. Nader claims that he was always taught that one person could make a difference, how to truly value freedom, and how to affect change in minor issues in their town. These lessons influence Nader's life and career today. After his high school graduation, he attended Princeton University in 1955 and Harvard Law School in 1958, where he served as editor of the Harvard Law Record. He then moved to Connecticut in 1959, where he worked at a local law firm soon after graduating. He had always been interested in auto safety due to the fact that while he was young, he hitchhiked a lot. During this time, he saw many accidents and always wanted to fix the issues that caused them. Uh, I lost some friends when I was your age in car crash. And the likelihood of being killed or seriously injured in those days was five times greater than now for your classmates, because cars are much safer in many ways. He realized that no one was going to fix these problems unless he did, so he moved to Washington to pursue a solution. After reading an article on auto safety, he decided to write one of his own. So I began to find out that these cars were unsafely designed. They had no seatbelts, no airbags, no padded dash panels, the, uh, the rollover protection was minimal, the brakes and tires were way beyond cars in Europe, and uh, I went to law school and I wrote a, a third year paper in law school on unsafe auto design in the absence of mandatory safety standards, and I turned it, turned it into the book Unsafe and Speed. In the book, Nader discusses car safety and asserts the fact that the leading cause of accidents wasn't the person behind the wheel, but the car itself. Soon after the book was published, it was revealed that Nader was being followed and even threatened by General Motors representatives who sought to deter him from his cause. Nader took GM to court and won his case against the company. This was one of the very first times Nader was seen in the public eye as someone who successfully took a stand for what they believed in. He was a fierce defendant during the case, and his stand paid off when the case was won. And that led in 1966, September, to the enactment of the Highway and Motor Vehicle Safety Law, which irregularly enforced still prevented about three and a half million fatalities uh, to date, according to the Center for Auto Safety. After the passage of this historic policy, it was a dead sprint for Ralph Nader and his followers who were nicknamed Nader's Raiders. With a reimbursement of almost half a million dollars, Nader was able to continue his attack on unsafe products in the U.S. In 1971, Nader founded Public Citizen, a nonprofit consumer advocacy group which presided over the numerous projects Ralph Nader was working on. 
During the next decade, Knitter was a driving force behind more than 24 different consumer protection laws. These included the Occupational Safety and Health Act, which dealt with protecting the safety of people while they were working, the Freedom of Information Act, which gives citizens access to government records, and the Wholesome Meat Act, which requires all meats to be inspected by the federal government. He was recognized as one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in 1965. Many everyday things that we take for granted, like food labels, medical warnings on cigarette packages, safe drinking water, cleaner air, and so much more, are all thanks to Ralph Nader and the acts that he worked to pass. Nader did not stop with consumer protectionism, though. In 1992, he encouraged many people in New Hampshire to write in his name for President of the United States. He wanted to make the government more responsible for their actions and take better care of the people, but did not want to formally run. But the corporations became so powerful under Nixon and Reagan and uh, uh, Clinton uh, that we couldn't get anything done for the people in Washington, D.C. He received a couple thousand votes. This did not stop Nader, though. He continued his crusade in the 1996 election, this time as a Green Party candidate. His platform was very symbolic and he did not campaign much, but public awareness of him and his impact increased. His greatest opportunity for a presidential election bid came in the year 2000, when he ran again as a Green Party candidate. He had lived and learned about what the world of politics was like and came into the 2000 election full speed ahead. Although he ran as a Green Party candidate in the 2000 election, Nader gained traction throughout the race. His strong and determined personality appealed to many Americans, and he brought in votes from citizens across America. He gained support from two major swing states and supposedly stole the election from Al Gore in Florida, allowing Bush to swoop in and claim the presidency. As a result, many Democrats and Republicans lost respect for him and it gave him a poor reputation in the eyes of many politicians and citizens. Many today still despise Nader for stealing Gore's votes, but in retrospect, Nader's political involvement has mainly had a positive effect on America's citizens and their lives. Nader ran for president again in 2004 and 2008, but did not receive many votes due to the controversy of the 2000 election. Today, Nader's achievements and accomplishments are taken for granted and are under-recognized. Nader devoted most of his life to the protection of consumers and has made a tremendous difference in society, even if it is not widely acknowledged. Imagine if you got in a car and the airbag said Nader on it. You know, like how everything says Trump on buildings. If the airbag said Nader, or if the seatbelt said Nader, or if you get bumped from a plane and it says your, your remuneration on your ticket and you get it Ralph Nader on your ticket, or, you know, you look at the air and it's cleaner and it says Ralph Nader, or if you look at your food and it says this food was made safer by Ralph Nader. If people would see that on a day-to-day -day basis, they'd understand the effect that this guy has had on their daily life. Nader himself describes his lifetime of achievement and advocacy for consumers as a thirst for justice. Justice for the consumer, justice for citizens, and justice for the federal government. He is still involved in the field today, and the institutions he created live on. He never married and has no children, but most who know him would claim that he was married to his work. In his lifetime, he has helped pass over 23 legislative acts, and the list continues to grow. He was instrumental in the founding of over 50 institutions dealing with protecting civilians. His time in the world of politics created many enemies, but he never stopped fighting for justice, despite being hated by many. Ralph Nader took a stand in the 1960s against General Motors and has continued to do so against numerous foundations and government corporations. His defense maintained growth when he ran for president and took a stand against the two-party system that has dominated our capitalistic society for years. He stood up against corporate greed at the expense of consumers and his legacy is seen everywhere. He has inspired future generations to stand up for what they believe in and has shown us all what it truly means to fight the good fight. The individual can make a difference. Most people think, oh, it's going to take thousands or tens of thousands. No, most of the great movements in our history for a better life for people, justice and peace, uh, through one or two people. So don't let anybody tell you you're not ready. You're too small. You're too young. That's not true. You know, when you're age, you're ready to go to learn how to become an important citizen activist which is uh, really the most important office you'll ever hold, the office of citizen.